Hey everyone, this is Kamran and today's video is about the Fetch API in JavaScript, which is the built-in way to make the API calls in the browser. The old built-in way of making API calls used to be XML HTTP request, which as you can see here had a weird syntax, uses callbacks and has lots of boilerplate code. The new built-in way is to make the API calls using the Fetch API, which is much simpler and uses promises. Now, if you want to write the same code using the fetch API, all we have to do is call fetch, pass it the URL, and it will give us a promise in return, and we can get the response in dot then here, and the error in the dot catch. And now if we run it, you will see that we are getting the successful response in the console here. Now, there are a few things that we should know about fetch, which make it different from, let's say, Axios or any other libraries that you might be using. Fetch will only throw the error in case of network failures, which means that even if our API is returning any error, it will still pass the promise and we will get the response in the then instead of the catch here. Let's try that out. So I will change the URL and pass some non-existing post ID, which will cause the API to throw a bad request exception. And now if we run it again, you will see that it's still passing and calling then instead of the catch, even if our API is giving us the error in response. To get around this, Fetch provides us a few object variables such as OK and status, which we can use to check if the request was failed on the server or if it was successful. And now if we run it again, you will see that we are getting OK to be false and the status is set to 404, which means that our API was not successful and it got an error from the server. And now if we pass a valid post ID, the request will pass and we are getting now OK to be true and the status is set to be 200. The other thing to note about the fetch is that the response JSON is also a promise instead of the object. So if I put a console log here with response.json, you will see that it's a promise. To get our response from this promise, we can run the promise here or we can use the promise chaining. Let's use promise chaining. So I will just return response.json from here and we will add another then and console log the post and you will see that we are getting the response in the console now. One last thing before we move on to the post calls is passing the query parameters. To pass the query parameters in the request, all you have to do is pass them in the URL like this and all these variables will be sent in the API call along with the request. Okay, now that we have covered making the get calls, let's talk about the other HTTP methods. To make the API calls with any other HTTP methods such as post, put, patch or delete, fetch accepts a second parameter which is an options object where we can specify the method, request body, headers and the other options. So if you want to make a post call, let's say to create a new post, all you have to do is just pass the method set to post and for the body we need to pass our JSON object with JSON.stringify and headers in the headers key. Now if we run this, you will see that our API call was successful and we are getting the newly created post in the response. And that's it for this lesson. You don't need to increase the bundle size of your application by using Axios or any other library for making API calls if you can suffice all your needs with the fetch which is built into the browser and is supported by most of the major browsers except IE11 where you can use the official polyfill to support that also. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below and I will see you in the next lesson.